The Bootleg Tapes Chapter 3 Padfoot and Prongs, 1978 Remus left the library, and for a few moments Sirius felt panic grip his insides. Wait, he wanted to say. Don't make me do this alone. But he knew it was the best thing, deep down. James would appreciate it more, and, after all, Remus had done his bit already. Muffliato, Sirius said quickly. They were in a relatively private part of the library, but better to be safe than sorry. He tucked his hair behind one ear and laughed nervously. James was still staring. Sirius cleared his throat, needing to break the ice. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, it's exactly what you think it is. You, James said, his eyebrows creasing together, then smoothing out, as if he wasn't sure which expression best suited the situation. Sirius licked his lips, searching for something to say. This was so frustrating. He and James always knew how to talk to each other. They could share anything. So it had always been that way. Be brave, he told himself. Mooney would be brave. Mooney wouldn't think twice. And anyway, James wouldn't be angry. He'd been so kind to Remus after all. But still, he said nothing. I've been meaning to tell you, Sirius said carefully. It's just, well, finding the right time, you know? We spend every waking moment together, Padfoot, James said, still looking winded by this revelation. Oh dear, Sirius thought anxiously. He is annoyed. Bollocks. Yeah, Sirius nodded, rubbing the back of his neck. He felt fidgety and too hot. He tugged at his school tie. I know. Well, suppose not every moment, otherwise I'd have realised, James said stonily. We were hiding it, Sirius said quickly. He didn't want James thinking he was a bad friend, or neglectful, or any of that bullshit. If anyone was to blame, it was him, Sirius. Maybe Mooney too, a little bit, but if anyone was going to get it in the neck, then it ought to be serious. Pads, James was saying now, still frowning. I don't want to be rude or anything, but what the fuck do you think you're doing? What? Sirius looked up at him, taken aback. He'd expected a few different responses, but not that. That's Mooney, our best friend Mooney. I know! Remus Lupin! I know his name! Sirius snapped, getting annoyed now. He couldn't see what the other boy was getting at, and it felt very unfair for James to be having a go at him like this, when he was just trying to be honest. We spent seven years trying to get him to trust us! James continued, gesturing wildly with his hands as if they were disagreeing on a Quidditch play. He has literally only just started telling us anything about himself, and you're going to bugger it all up because you can't control yourself. Oi! Cyrus growled, gritting his teeth and clenching his fists. That isn't what this is! James scoffed, rolling his eyes. Uh, come on, Sirius, I know what you're like. You're all in until you get bored. Look, I never said anything when it was Mary. She can take care of herself. Or Emmeline, even though you were a proper bastard to her. Or Avni, or Florence, or anyone else you've gone after. But this is too far, even for you, Black. If this is because we're both, I don't give a shit about that. James waved a hand dismissively. You know I don't care about that kind of thing. What I care about is you acting like you can have anyone, anytime, with no consequences. But it hasn't been that easy, believe me, Sirius replied dryly. I don't believe you. If you could just think with your brain instead of your dick for once. Piss off, I don't need this crap, Sirius returned. You're obviously not interested in listening. It's Mooney, James said again, as if Sirius was a particularly stupid first year struggling with a very simple spell. Well, I thought he looked familiar, Sirius said, exasperated. 
I can't believe you're being such a prick about this. I'm trying to talk some sense into you. I know you've always been a bit... Well, you know, you march to the beat of your own drum or whatever. But Remus isn't. He's not just someone you can try on for a bit and see if it fits. He needs us, now more than ever. Oh, Sirius thought with a clunk. So that's it. They stared at each other a bit longer, hot brown eyes meeting icy blue. Sirius gave in first, because he always did, when it was James. Prongs, I know how it looks, I know what you must think, but I swear it's not like that. It just happened, and I wanted to tell you I did, I was going to tell you at Christmas. Christmas? James's eyebrows shot up. Bloody Christmas! It's been going on since last summer, Sirius said quickly, keen to tell the truth now that it was all out. I mean, some stuff before then, but but pretty much. He hoped he wasn't blushing. He was still ashamed of the way he'd behaved last year. James's eyes widened, and the look of moral outrage did not dissipate. He shook his head. I don't understand you. After everything he's been through. Look. He did have some choice in the matter. You're acting as if he can't make decisions for himself when you know bloody well that no one ever makes Mooney do anything, the stubborn git. James didn't have a response to that, but Sirius could see in his face that it had given him a pause. Seeing an opportunity, he forged ahead. This isn't all my fault. Marlin, I thought you'd understand. Well, or at least be a bit less judgmental. I've had to listen to you banging on about Evans for the past five years, and I don't complain. James smirked, despite himself. Yeah, you do. Sirius grinned back, shrugging. Okay, I do. But you're not the only one allowed to fall in love. Wait. James looked up again, frowning. In love? You're in love with... Mooney? Well, that was just an example, Sirius said hurriedly, backtracking. Bugger, how had that slipped out? I, I just mean, well, we've not exactly talked about it anyway, but that, that's not my point. James's mouth had fallen open, but at least he'd stopped frowning. Look, Sirius said, leaning forward on the desk. I know you care about him. We all do. I do. It's not like it was with all those girls. It's more. It's it's better. He makes me better. He understands me. Merlin. James sat down abruptly, staring at the book in front of him. He shook his head, still frowning, but he didn't look angry anymore. Sirius waited, not sure what else he could say. Sorry. He tried again. I don't know what else to tell you, but... Well, I'm not asking for your permission. I'm just letting you know. This is how it is. James ran his hands through his hair, shaking his head again. He sighed deeply. <sighs> All this reading, he said. I need a break. Yeah, Sirius nodded, keen for a subject change. Quidditch pitch? James finally looked him in the eye. Sirius smiled, relieved. Go on, then. They packed up their things quickly and left the castle. Outside, things felt a bit better. Sirius began to relax. He wondered where Mooney was. He couldn't wait to talk to him, to celebrate the clearing of this final hurdle. He and James got changed into their flying gear in companionable silence. James wasn't like Remus. You didn't have to keep prodding and wheeling to get an answer. He either told you what he thought, or you could assume everything was fine. James was ready before he was, and waited in the doorway of the changing block holding both brooms. Sirius came to meet him. It was a perfect clear day, the sky was blue, and there was just enough of a nip in the air to keep their senses sharp. Sirius accepted his broom from James and inhaled the fresh air. He looked at James. Once they were up in the air, it would be over, all this discomfort, all the awkwardness. 
Just one more thing he needed to say. Prongs? Yeah, Padfoot. All that stuff you said about Mooney. Cyrus looked up at his best friend from behind his hair. About how he's only just started trusting us, and how he needs us. That's still true. That's why I really need you to get used to this. Okay, Potter? You need to show him everything's the same. James looked at him for a long time, his dark brown eyes still and endless. He nodded. Yeah, I know. I will, I swear.